This is an example problem of parameter regression with a dynamic model using real data from a subsea pipeline, and we're going to do this with Excel. So we have this uh, temperature and a valve, and we're going to be measuring the temperature and looking at the response to changes in the valve. And uh, so you can read through this. Here's the address right here that you can go to, and a little bit more detail on doing the first order plus time delay models and be able to fit those, so a little bit of theory, and then graphical methods and optimization methods, so both of those are available. Okay, we're going to use a, an optimization method with Excel. We need this data file right here, and I'll just go ahead and right click it, save target, and then just save it to my desktop. Okay, there's the data plotted, and there's some example code to start with in Python, and there's also the Python solution right here. We're going to be going over the same solution, a simplified version of it with Excel. Let's just start Excel and use a blank workbook. I'm just going to go ahead and edit this with a notepad, editor, select all of it, copy, and then paste it in. And then I'll select my, let me increase my size a little bit here, and then select data. And let's just do text to columns. And this one's gonna be delimited, and it's gonna be delimited with a comma. And click finish. Okay, so there's my data with time, valve position, and temperature. And then we're also gonna have a predicted temperature as well and so this is just going to start off with uh, equal to the initial condition and then I have a formula that I need to apply this is going to be the analytical solution to my first order system and that is going to be uh, let's go over here to this link okay and there is the solution uh, right here I'll just move that down to the bottom so I can see that at the same time we're looking at our Excel sheet. Okay, so let's just go ahead and uh, type this in. Uh, this is going to be equal to, and we have EXP of negative, okay, and then we have our delta T. So I'll take my time difference. There's my first part and then I'll divide by a tau value. So I'm going to put a placeholder for that right here and I'll make that a static reference. Okay, that, and that's going to be by hitting the F4 key. Okay, and uh, let me just make that correction there. I'll put a tau value in here. Okay, so the tau value, let's say I I think that's going to be equal to a thousand and let me label this tau p okay I also have a gain a kp value and let me just set that equal to one initially and so I'll just estimate these two parameters right here I'll go ahead and insert those it'll adjust the formula for me and I'll just make those yellow so we can see these are the ones that we're going to be estimating to fit to the to fit these two columns as close as we can to each other. Okay, so let's continue on with our formula here. I have that first part, and then I need to multiply by. Okay, and this in this case it's going to be equal to uh, the prior prediction. Okay, minus the very initial condition. Okay, I need to make that one static as well. Okay, next I'm going to add in, I'm going to add in uh, one minus that same quantity that I had before. Okay, and then multiply by KP. And don't forget to make this one a static reference as well. And then I'm going to multiply by my, uh, let me open a parentheses valve position and that's actually going to be from the prior valve position so let me go back one step 
minus the same valve position, but just the very first one. So I'd make that static as well. And then I'll add in my initial Y value. Make that one static too. Okay, so there is my formula. I'm going to go ahead and fill that one down just by selecting this little box here. Double click on that and it'll fill it down for you. And then let's just see how I'm predicting right now. And I'll insert a chart. Okay, so there is my chart. I'm just going to cut that for now and I'll move it up to the top just so it's right where everything else is. And I'll just remove this title, make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so there you can see the actual temperature, which is in orange, and the predicted temperature. You can see where the valve uh, turns on. And if I adjust these, you know, this KP, maybe set to 0 0.5, you can see that it's going to adjust and get just a little bit closer uh, to that value. I can adjust the tau P as well. Okay, so I could manually adjust these if I wanted to and get it uh, just a little bit closer. Okay, but let me just leave it at some wrong values. And we'll show how we can use optimization now to get those uh, fit as best as we can. So let's do our air squared here. Okay, and that's just going to be equal to the difference between the two temperatures, and I'll square it. So initially it's going to be zero, and then we'll have the squared air. Okay, and then I just want to do a sum of squared airs, and we'll just make that equal to the sum of those squared airs. Okay, so that's the function right here that I'm going to try to minimize. All right, let me just go ahead and color that different colors. I'm going to be adjusting these two in order to get the best sum of squared error. So you can see if I, I change this a little bit, you, you see the sum of squared errors is going to change as well. And if I put that down to one, you're going to see it's a better fit. Okay, now we want to use the Excel solver in order to be able to get us the best fit possible. And so I'm going to come to data. And then if I don't have solver in here, what I need to do is come to file and then options and then go to add-ins. And you can select, uh, let me see if I can do that again. Okay, file, options, okay, add-ins. And oh, there it is. Okay, solver, add-in. Or you can just click go here and then select the solver add-in and then click OK. Okay, it's going to add in the solver for Excel and there you can see solver is added in now. So it's an optional feature that you got to turn on in the add-in section. So here we have our objective function. I'm going to select the sum of squared errors and we want to minimize that by changing the value of these cells. Okay, sometimes you want to make sure this is unselected. Okay, the tau's uh, tau p is always going to be positive, so you could always add that constraint back in. But the gain could be negative. In this case, it is going to be positive. But I generally like to unselect that. Okay, so it's going to try to minimize that. <coughs> okay, it adjusted those two values to come up with the minimum fit there. And there you can see the sum of squared errors is right around 2,000. Okay, now this is, tau p is going to be in minutes. Okay, and then we have our kp. Uh, that's our gain right there. So this is uh, the solution in Excel. Now you're probably asking what happened to theta p. Uh, in Excel, it's very difficult to implement uh, and optimize the theta p. It's, it's easy to implement, but it's difficult to optimize the value of theta p, uh, the GRG solver, uh, isn't going to do very well with that. So I'd say just if you're doing it in Excel, uh, just try to manually fit that yourself. Uh, you can adjust the time delay 
okay, by selecting which U values you choose. If you have more time delay, then you'd want to select uh, U values, uh, U value from earlier. So this would be like two time delay, three time delay, four time delay, etc. Okay, so you could do that manually and just fill that formula down, and then uh, you get a different time delay. Okay, um, let's do this with SimTune as well. So that was with Excel. Let's uh, SimTune is going to be a, uh, a program that's available from Apco Inc. And I'll just open this up. Um, okay, so it's a nice uh, simulator tool for learning control. And I'll go to Tools, and this will be a process model identifier. Now, I have something where I can bring in a data file. I can select a new data file and then identify my time, process value, and then my output. I'm just going to show you how to get the, uh, the file you need for this. Okay, I'm going to go back to my original page, and there's a, a new file that we need here. Um, let me go back one more. Okay. So this was our original, uh, looks like I went back a little bit too far. Okay, so here is my uh, FOPDT optimization fit. And then down at the bottom is our homework problem on parameter regression. And then once I get to this, uh, you need a different data file for this one because you need a timestamp. Okay, so I've made that available under this section right here, Show Excel SimTune Solution. Just go ahead and right click on this and do Save Target As. Okay, and this is just Pipeline Data 2. I'll save that to my desktop. Go back to SimTune, <clears throat> SimTune and select the new file. Okay, go to my desktop and select that one and open it. Okay, now I'm going to select my time. There are my minutes. Here is my temperature. That's going to be my process value, my PV. And then you select my OP as well, which is my valve position. Okay, and you can scroll through these and see the different values. And then what I want to do is go to solver configuration. Okay, and I have a min and max. And I'm going to set this max to be much larger. I don't want to constrain it uh, to that small value. And then the minimax, you can always click estimate there. And it'll give you kind of a range. Um, you know, here as well. This one is a little bit too low. So I'm just going to increase that. And then it'll also allow you to estimate the dead time as well. Okay, so I'll just put uh, that as a little bit higher. And then uh, let's go ahead and just identify the model. So now you'll see the solver and the solver progress here. And uh, you can see that it's identifying you know, better and better models. It's currently thinking it has a negative gain. It actually has a positive gain. So we'll hopefully see this turn around right there. Um, you know, it's trying to come up with a better value. It is also doing a sum of squared errors. Okay, that you can see right there as it, as it goes. Um, so the gain is uh, improving there. It should turn out to be positive. Again, let's just compare that with what we got. We got a gain of 0.4 and a tau p of 210. But in seconds, okay, let's just see what that's going to be in terms of seconds. So it's about 12,000 seconds. Okay, so very slow dynamics for this system. And let's just see what uh, SimTune is able to give us. Okay, so you can see that it came up with, uh, you know, this fit right here. Uh, it came up with about 14,000 seconds and a gain that was very similar to ours, the dead time of zero. And you can see a sum of squared errors as well. Okay, so very similar to what we had uh, for our, our Excel fit. Okay, so you can use uh, either one for this assignment. You could either use Excel if you want to program that yourself, or you could try SimTune. 
if uh, it's available for BYU students it's installed on the uh, Katem computers for you okay I hope this helps uh, you know I'd, I'd say definitely try to do this with Python if at all possible and uh, these are just two alternatives to be able to check your work um, you know Python just a little bit more capable uh, being able to estimate uh, you know in addition to these two parameters in Excel uh, Python also estimates the theta P as well the dead time